Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be starting to um, kind of clean up or simplify the wiring on the Baja Bug. One step in doing that is I wanted to make uh, a rear wing or something that would take the tail lights from what I used to have down here by the engine and just kind of get it all a little bit higher in a more focused area. And really what I wanted to do is just get it away from the engine because when it's down here, I didn't like having the, the taillights and everything down here with all that wiring all in the same spot as the engine wiring. I think it'd be a lot cleaner and a lot simpler if I had that all separate. What I'm going to do first, I'm not going to give you any details on this yet. I'm going to go down in the basement and show you the wiring system that I want to hook up to really simplify all the wiring on the Baja. Alright, so here's the setup that I've got going on right now. What I ended up purchasing is this device here, which is called the Switch Pros SP9100. I'm not, I'm not pushing this product. I don't have any skin in the game with this. I'm just showing you what I bought and how I'm gonna use it. Uh, what this thing does is essentially, this is your switch pad. This is going to be your switches, and this just has a little comm wire that runs back to this module. This module is going to be down in my battery box. This is waterproof and essentially everything happens inside of here. So this is going to replace my fuse block, the terminal board, all of that stuff is now going to run through here. What I have set up here is essentially the, the lighting system that I'm going to have on the Baja, except what I don't have mocked up here are the headlights because I didn't want to take that off of the Baja. But I've got my my rear tail lights, this is going to be my third brake light. These will be the uh, left and right brake lights, and these will be driving lights. Now, none of this has anything to do with the brake lights, because the brake lights have nothing to do with this switch controller, because they're going to be wired directly to my actual brake switch on the pedal. But to simulate that, this is the wire for the brakes. So if I give this power... Okay, so those are going to be my brake lights. Now what I have, the way I have it set up right now is my brake lights are integrated into my turn signals. I'm not going to have that with the new setup. The new setup is going to have these amber lights back there, and these will be my turn signals in addition to driving lights. So if I have the driving lights turned on, these will be lit up, along with the, the brake lights will be lit up using them as tail lights. These will be the ambers that are on the front clip. There's actually, there will be four, but I've just got two mocked up here. And then if I hit the brake pedal, the three red lights are going to, you know, be the brakes. The amber lights don't have anything to do with the brakes. Now, the system that I have back there right now actually works without a problem. It's not that it's not working. Um, I'm just... When I kind of stumbled across this Switch Pro device and found out how much... I can simplify the wiring and there's a lot of programmable features of this that I really just thought were kind of cool. This Switch Pro device is $550 for one of these, uh, so it's not cheap. It's actually pretty expensive. But after I was thinking about it for a while and thought of the cool things that I could do and how much I could clean up my wiring, I decided to go ahead and, and give it a go. Obviously, that's what I'm doing right now. Let me show you some of the programming features that I'm going to be able to do with it. It actually does quite a bit. I'm not going to go through all of that because I'm not trying to sell you the product. I'm just trying to show you why I bought it and what some of the cool things that I want to do with my setup are going to be. So this is going to be my uh, switch pad for the lighting. These are my driving lights. This is my left turn, right turn. The sticker sheet that comes with it, they don't have a high beam and a low beam. What I did is they had one for floodlight, and that's going to be my headlight. And then the spot, I'm going to consider that my high beam. So this will be my low beam. This will be my high beam. These are my reverse lights or my backup lights. These are my halos. The LED, halo, the LED headlights that I have on the Baja have halos. So that's going to be for that. This switch I haven't designated yet because it's the last switch I have available on here. So I want to be careful that I don't waste it. So I'm leaving that one empty for now. So one of the features that the Switch Pro did, which I thought was pretty cool, is you can Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth to it um, and actually that's the best way to program the switches so right now I've got the the switch pro turned on I just pulled up the app on my phone and if I click scan for local devices it comes up with lights that's what I named my device so I click on that 
And now I'm Bluetoothed into the controller. I don't know if you can see it, but this little light up there turns blue when you're Bluetoothed into it. And now these are my eight switches. And you can see if I touched it here, then it turns it on there. Same thing for the backup lights. Turn it on there, and it turns it on there. So that right there is kind of cool. And then you can use this to do all the programming on the switches. You can switch, you can program the switches manually, but it's a lot easier if you pull up the app because these has this has all of the programming functions, and it's a heck of a lot easier to do it this way. But anyways, I don't, I'm not going to go into detail on that. So I got these eight switches. With this device, I can tell these two switches that when I press them, instead of just turning on, just to flash. That's just a program setting that you can put in there and all of a sudden that becomes a flasher. So now this is my turn signal. Anytime I hit this button, that light is going to flash and that's my turn signal. Then I'm also going to use these as my hazards because if I just press both of them, then they essentially flash as my hazards. So these two switches are taking care of my left right turn signal and my hazards. Then with my driving lights, if I press it on once, it just turns on the driving lights. Nothing fancy there. However, if I give it a double tap when I turn it on, it'll turn those driving lights into strobes. So I turn it off and then I just tap it twice. And now the driving lights are strobes. You know, I don't really need that, but I think it's kind of cool. And if I'm on the trail, uh, to have the rear amber lights flashing, that's kind of a nice safety feature. Again, not something that I need, but it's pretty cool. Then if I just turn it again, it turns those off. My reverse lights, if I press that, it just turns them on just like it did before. However, they do have a dimming function. So if I turn them off, I turn them back on, and I actually hold that button down, it gives you, I think, four or five different stages of dimming. So I press it on, hold it, and when this starts flashing, the rate that it's flashing tells me how much it's dimming. And if I just let it off when I'm done, they'll stay nice and nice and dim. In addition to that, I can also, if I double tap this, just like the driving lights, it turns the back lights into strobes, which I think that's kind of cool. Again, if I'm driving down the trail, sometimes just having the back lights, the backup lights on as strobes would be really nice. So that's some of the features that I thought was kind of cool. Maybe once I get this all set up, I'll do a little tutorial going into detail. Um, the additional things that you can do with this that are kind of cool, just not something that I'm necessarily utilizing. But that and the fact that it's going to simplify my electrical wiring so much is why I decided to go with it. Because essentially I just think it's going to be cool and fun to do. And uh, really, that's why I'm doing this whole project. So that's the layout that I have right now. That's how I'm going to set up all the wiring on that back wing. Let me take you upstairs and show you kind of show you the wing and why I did certain aspects of it and what you guys think of the design. So here's the wing setup. I throw the I brought the lights up and throw them in there just so that you can get a little better idea of how how it's going to look. I made uh, a couple of different variations of this. This is the one that I'm liking so far, and I do think that I'm going to make it. I don't know if you can see, but. There's many different, there's been like lots of changes as I'll lay this out, find things that I think look good, I don't look good. This is like, this number three is because this is the third rendition of this side piece I made. I just kept trying pieces up here and I would think that they would look dumb and just kind of make some changes. And finally I came up with this one that I think looks pretty good. I actually love the way that it looks from the rear. I purposely left it you know kind of leaned forward so that you can still walk up here and access stuff back here so that you can work on everything you can also still get a rear window in here if you want to it comes up and it'll just clear through here but a, a window will still fit and with this um, third brake light being an oval light and allowing me to kind of come up like this i will still be able to see out the back through my rear view mirror and I really, really want to be able to at least see some of what's back here so that when I'm on the road or on the trails, I can see if I'm being tailgated or if I got a dirt bike trying to get around me or something. So I thought that was nice that I was able to do that. What I made this out of is this, the white part here is quarter inch 
foam board that you'll get at like Walmart or Target. And this is half inch foam insulation board that I just got from Home Depot. And I've used these things before when I'm making templates like this just to get an idea of what I'm making, like how it would look when it was all done. So I don't have the aluminum yet to make this, but this week I'm gonna run to the scrapyard and I'll, I'll see what they have. I'm gonna try and grab something pretty thick. Like I'm hoping to make these side panels out of quarter inch so that they're really strong. And this will probably be something around 3 16 so that it holds a lot of its form here and I don't have to have any brakes on it because my brake is not strong enough to break anything that is gonna be this big. So hopefully they'll have something there that's pretty solid and big enough that I can do this. I also haven't decided yet how I'm going to fasten all of these pieces, if I'm gonna rivet it or screw it or weld it or what. So I've still got some things to figure out on it. So thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it's helping you with your projects and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.